Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is the second class, so we will just continue with our review of thermodynamics and probably get into mechanics, review of mechanics. And from probably two more classes after, we will be going into required gas dynamics. First thing will be one dimensional gas dynamics, that will be two more classes from now probably. I think next class we will talk about something physical about the gas, how it talks to each other kind of. We will talk about that next time, if we have time, we will see that. So, last time we ended with uh, the laws of thermodynamics, zeroth law, first law and second law and we said that zeroth law was needed for talking about something called equilibrium and we said that if we say thermal equilibrium exists, then we need some property called temperature to be defined for the system, which I will say are equal for the two systems if they are two of them are in equilibrium with each other. Similarly, if I say mechanical equilibrium then forces at the surfaces that is pressure must be equal between the two systems for me to call them to be in mechanical equilibrium across that. And then we said chemical equilibrium is a case where the composition of the gases inside the system does not change. We are interested in only gases, but this can be extended to liquids, solids, everything if you want. We are in gas dynamics, so we will just talk about gases in our case. Okay. Uh, if there is a system which is in, this is one thing which I missed last time, if there is a system which is in thermal, mechanical and chemical equilibrium, that system is overall called as in thermodynamic equilibrium with another system. If there are system A and system B which are in thermal equilibrium, mechanical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium with each other, then they are supposedly called as in thermodynamic equilibrium with each other. There is nothing that changes as far as thermodynamics is concerned. Okay. And then we went into first law where we said we needed some quantity called energy and then we said that, ener that property is conserved always. If there is some amount of energy given to the system, then it can use it to do some work or it can give out some energy okay, or it can store it within itself. These are the various things possible. We did not put any mathematical expression for it yet, we will do it now. Okay. The next one we said was uh, second law of thermodynamics, where we said we needed some quantity called entropy and then we said that quantity entropy will always be increasing in the direction of naturally occurring process. Okay. If we go the opposite path in that process, entropy will decrease and that will not be a naturally occurring process. Okay. So, now we have to put some mathematical expressions for them. So, if I think about uh, the first law, oops, I can easily say that uh, I have some box, some system A and then some amount of heat is going in and let us say it is giving out some amount of heat and say there is some kind of work in, we will talk about that next and then probably there is some kind of work out. Any other possible interactions currently for our systems? Currently nothing, why we are assuming simple compressible substance, where we can do only heat or cool the gas or we can do PDV work on it, that is the only thing that is possible we say. So, only this much is possible. So, now we look at this, what do you mean by W in? 
the surroundings are doing work on the system that is let us say I am compressing the gas what am I doing surroundings are expanding this is compressing okay. what is going to happen finally surroundings are doing work on the system what should happen to the energy of the system hmm. surroundings okay let us go to work out what happens if I say work is done by the system on the surroundings what should be the case now system it will be negative work a positive work and uh, for surrounding it will be negative work for the surroundings it should be negative work if I say that work is done by the system to the surroundings uh, it is just a convention I guess if I say W equal to P D V I will go back and write it as molar volume if needed currently let us keep it as volume as such okay. if I write it like this what do I mean by this of course when I write this I have to have a delta W or D W somewhere one side cannot be D W on other side nothing right cannot be that so when I write this I am considering I will follow this convention where my system is having a pressure P and it is expanding by volume D V and uh, this is the work done by the system okay. and I am calling this positive work which means my work done by the system is positive that is the way I am considering it okay. what will happen if work is done by surroundings on the system automatically if work is done by outside on to the system it is like some piston pressing from outside and the system gets compressed so that will automatically give you a negative volume and that will work if I pick this convention of course I could pick completely opposite convention as long as I know the convention is the opposite it will still work I just have to take care of that minus sign somewhere and it will completely work we will follow this convention okay. we will consider this as W out dw out is equal to pdv we will just consider that way okay. so now of course i can consider a w in and a w out and then find out the net or i'll simply say i'll take the summation of all this and i'll go to a equivalent system where there is net dw out net work done outward if overall the volume of the system decreased I will automatically get this value to be negative we will keep it that way it just comes out to be negative which means outside external surroundings are doing work on the system that will automatically happen similarly now I can write this q in and q out in a similar fashion and I will just tell q in q is a heat amount of heat that is sent in is what I will call as q n now I will just tell if net energy is going from inside to outside this will be negative okay, that will automatically take care of the direction so now I can write overall what should be my energy balance if I think about these two things these are the two interactions that are possible heat transfer across the surface and PDV work across the surface only two things are possible now the net interaction will be these two together anything else missing in my energy balance maybe there is energy stored inside this is the energy E inside my system maybe uh, think of the system as myself and energy can be money right now easy thing to think about somebody gives me money I could use it to do some work that is pay somebody get something done or I can just keep it in my pocket so the system could just take the money from outside keep it inside in its pocket or do some work outside that is the only way you can think about it money cannot be torn away that is the rule similarly that is the first law of thermodynamics it says energy cannot be just vanishing somewhere 
it has to be present somewhere, it has to be conserved okay. that is a simple logic. So, I am going to write I will just put d q from now on it actually means q into the system is positive okay. that discussion went through up to here after that I will just call it q from now on net q in is positive. and I am going to call this d w out is positive, I would not put that out symbol anymore, I will just assume you keep that convention that is why we spent that 5 minutes in here. So, this is the way we will write this is your first law from mathematical point of view, okay. what is happening is net amount of energy taken into the system how much is stored versus how much is used for doing some work on the surroundings that is what it says. Now, of course, we can write it as a more common form C V times D T plus P D V this is a more common form I what is C V here specific heat at constant volume how do we define this? C V is defined as oops I have to write it as C V differential change in energy per change in temperature keeping volume of the system constant that is your specific heat capacity of the gas that is what is here and then of course, d w we already said is only simple compressible substance only pressure volume work is considered yes to be more correct it should be partial differential we will keep it as partial differential. I could change the internal energy keeping temperature constant and changing its volume internal energy by the way uh, I have to go back and talk about that next any state should depend on two other properties right. So, it should always be partial derivatives that is more correct okay. we will look at that next I will go back and explain that one more round. Okay. So, now if I go and talk about second law of thermodynamics we said uh, entropy is a quantity which always increases, but when we write it mathematically we think of it as there was some net energy interaction with the outside world and then that energy interaction if it is irreversible process then if it is a PDV work it can be reversed okay, if it is a heat interaction it cannot be easily reversed. Okay. So, we are thinking about heat interaction with the outside world and then we will say for such an interaction entropy is given by d q by temperature of the system actually it should be temperature at the interface. Okay. If you go and look at serious thermodynamics books they will call it it is at least this okay. and then they will say for simplicity we will keep it to be temperature at the interface and all that it is serious mathematically clear mathematically correct books we will talk more about this temperature it should actually be the reservoir temperature which is not happening in our any of the gas dynamics problems really if there is a flow going there is no reservoir next to it. But we will imagine that there was a reservoir next to it that fluid element then we will just consider that particular case imagine a reservoir next to it and see what it would have done and then get to these calculations that is what should be happening. Okay. But as of now we want to get to the mathematical expression final form which I want so we will just start from here and then we will say ideally it should be assuming a reversible transfer and all that okay. we will not go into too much mathematical details of this reversibility because it is not so important for our gas dynamics as long as we assume that this math is not wrong. Okay. We will say thermodynamics have already talked through with this and they are clear about it we will follow them as of now. 
so I can rewrite this along with this other expression or I would like this one first then I will go to this form. So, I will rewrite this as I have written this expression is it in terms of intensive property or extensive property. Why? So, I got both the answers only one of them is right really. This contains uh, volumes. Contains volume easy way to think about it I have one box with one volume say take exactly rep replica of that put one more volume next to it total volume will be double that means it is an extensive quantity okay. Same thing with energy say I have a box with one joule energy gas take exact replica of it one more joule of energy put them together the net gas has 2 joules of energy intensive extensive extensive entropy also same case extensive okay. the whole equation is written in terms of extensive properties as of now okay. we will keep it that way for now. So, of course, I can rewrite this as this is the form we will use a lot in gas dynamics we will see now why in today's class itself we will see why okay. this form is very useful for us. So, I will just put this rectangle around this okay. now let us say in case I want to think about intensive quantities only for this expression what should I do to get an intensive quantity from an extensive quantity all I have to do is divide by another in extensive quantity right this is an extensive quantity I divide by say mass which is another extensive quantity. So, I will get per unit mass entropy I have to give a symbol for it I will use small s ideally I am changing to small c here not very clear in my fonts but that is the change now I will just call this per mass this will have units of per mass what is the actual unit joules per kilogram Kelvin what was the unit of this one it is just joules per Kelvin okay. this has become intensive quantity because I change the units. I used this symbol already last class at the beginning I used this it said volume per mass okay. it is an intensive quantity inverse of density if you want to think about it. Okay. So, this is the typical way we will write if I want this expression to be changed to intensive quantities okay. it will just become this simple. Now, of course, I can have uh, per mass basis or per mole basis number of moles or number of molecules is another way of uh, I can call it another extensive quantity which I can divide this expression with and I will get another form of intensive equation this is one intensive equation I can get another intensive equation if I want. So, let us call that I am putting a cap on top saying this is per mole basis. this is molar volume one mole how much volume will it occupy differential of that that is this and if I think about C V this is joules per mole per Kelvin this will have a different unit now joules per mole Kelvin and this is of course entropy what is the unit joules per Kelvin per mole now. You entropy units here is joules per Kelvin ok. So, here it will be joules per Kelvin per mole here it will be joules per Kelvin per kilogram ok. It is typically mole 
if you want you can think about kilo mole we will come to that uh, when we take numbers we will do numbers soon. So, this is a very common form which we will use a lot, but I may choose to use one of these forms also in case okay. sometimes I may choose this. Now, there are lot of other properties which thermodynamicists created which are useful in analyzing situations special situations like say a flowing gas. Now, I need to think about some more extra quantities it is not a closed system it is an open system mass is exchanging across with the surroundings then I have to think about some more extra properties. What quantity did they introduce thermodynamics enthalpy okay, they introduce enthalpy for open systems while they will use E internal energy for closed systems they will go and use enthalpy for open systems and that is defined by this simple expression this is the relation okay. and of course, I can still define more things Gibbs was uh, the father of uh, modern thermodynamics and then he used this quantity and uh, it became Gibbs energy Gibbs free energy he called it only free energy it became Gibbs free energy afterwards. Okay. Gibbs free energy has this form and uh, this is related to how much if I talk about change from state 1 to state 2 this will be G 1 this will be G 2 I am going from G 1 to G 2 that delta G G 2 minus G 1 is the net possible work you can extract from the system if the system goes through this process from 1 to 2 ok. That is the usefulness of this G thermodynamics what is the use of doing all this we want to finally, find if I take my gas from one temperature to another temperature how much energy should I give in how much will I get out of it how much work will I get out of it that is what engineers are all thinking about all the time ok. Yeah, I give some energy I give some uh, whatever heat to it how much will I get out of it to think about that thermodynamics gives you this quantity it will be very helpful for you. This is also called available energy if you go and talk to uh, mechanical engineering thermodynamics people okay. we will not talk about it so much we will still call it Gibbs free energy okay. and in case I am doing control volume approach and I want to find uh, sorry uh, closed system not control volume closed system this is for open system these two will be predominantly used for open systems this will be for closed system if it is a closed system then this is your Helmholtz free energy okay. Helmholtz free energy we will use this symbol of course, different books uses the different symbols okay. uh, this is just E instead of H there this is enthalpy this is internal energy that will be the only change ok. If you think about it uh, in a physical sense what is really happening is if I go from state 1 to state 2 I need to supply this energy plus I have to also supply some amount of energy to increase its entropy. So, that the process naturally occurs from 1 to 2 ok this is in a way the bribe I have to pay nature to get whatever I want happening ok. So, if I give the gas say 100 joules of energy that will be here it will not give out 100 joules of energy as the work out finally, some amount of energy will be lost in increasing the entropy of the gas yes that is the best you can get out of it you will never get this full amount typically you will have more losses but if at all you think about how much can I get for a process then I have to think about G 1 and G 2 find the delta G this is the best I can get from the system. I have to of course, think about H 1 H 2 minus H 1 minus T 2 S 2 minus T 1 S 1 and all that okay. we have to do the whole thing. So, that is the use of these variables 
Of course, I can always think about the same convention as I used in this case, capital S becomes small s if I think about intensive quantities. So, I will go and write intensive quantities here. So, if I think of I will use mainly this system, I want to worry about f. So, if I want intensive properties, this is per mass basis. If I want it per mole basis, I will put a cap on top of all these quantities, simple enough. And similarly, I have g. This is again per mass basis. We will keep this. We will use this H equal to E plus P V predominantly in gas dynamics. It is a flowing gas open system always needs to be used. So, now the we have come to a point where we are used up all the thermodynamics laws. The next thing we need to talk about is about the gas itself. Perfect gas, what is a perfect gas is the next question. Okay. What is a perfect gas? No intermolecular forces, okay. In a way, we can think about it that way. Anything else? Specific heat capacity does not change with temperature, possibly. Any other explanation, any other ways of thinking about it? There is one more. What is it follows the ideal gas law or ideal gas equation. Okay. So, what is the ideal gas equation? P V equal to N R U T, okay. we will think of it that way. Okay. But uh, the way I am going to use it I will remove this u, because I want to write less on the board. I will put this double line r for universal gas constant. This is a constant for all gases, any gas you take in nature, it should be following this number of, what is this, n is what? Number of moles of mole particles sitting there. Volume is total volume, it is extensive, the whole expression is extensive. What is the extensive quantity here? n is the extensive quantity. Of course, remember both sides should have the same type of quantities. This is extensive, so this should be extensive. Okay. So, this equation should be valid. It has other forms. This is another form where this n is mole density. Okay. n by v is your mole density. It can be written like this if you want, number of moles per unit volume, it can be written like this. Or I want to write things in terms of per moam, per mass, not per mole, this is per mole. I want it per mass basis, I can rewrite things in terms of that, then I will go and do this. Remember this r is slightly different from the other r this is your universal gas constant, this is called specific gas constant, it depends on which gas we are talking about, it is not all gases, it is a specific gas we are talking about. Okay. So, what is the relation between these two r's? This is universal gas constant divided by molecular weight of that particular gas that will be this r okay. and rho is my density of the gas. So, this is the link between pressure, temperature and density. If my gas is obeying this, then I will call this gas an ideal gas, okay. but of course, uh, that is not completely enough. I can call this as a perfect gas equation or ideal gas equation. Now, I have to talk about the remaining things somebody guessed here that uh, C V or C P the specific heat capacity must be constant. Okay. So, we will think about it. Typically, if I think about 
any property oh we have to go back to that yeah this is the correct moment to go back to it uh, if i think about any quantity thermodynamic state of a system to define it how many properties do i need two why two say i give you pressure and temperature can you tell me number of moles look at this expression can you tell me number of moles if i give you pressure and temperature of the system you cannot okay but can you give me density yes you can give me density if you know the gas yes you can give me density okay let us say i give you pressure and volume can you tell me number of moles for my system i still cannot okay so it looks like i need three quantities of which at least one of them should be extensive for me to get the complete system if i am interested in extensive quantities if i am interested in only intensive quantities then two intensive properties are enough that's what we saw here if i give you pressure and temperature both are intensive quantities if i give you two intensive quantities that's enough to give me all intensive quantities of my system i cannot tell you the size of the system but i can tell you what it will be per kilogram of the system that kind of information i can give you that is the idea of this so we are thinking about how many properties should i give for defining a system completely okay. of course you have to give its composition right we started with zeroth law where we said we need pressure temperature and composition so we have to give all that okay to define things of course i need composition of course i can give you pressure and temperature if i give pressure and temperature then i am giving you two intensive quantities only in which case i can give you all intensive properties very easily but no extensive quantity if i want to think about extensive properties also i need to give you somewhere some extensive quantity say mass of the system or volume of the system number of particles inside the system number of molecules number of moles something i have to give you something that relates to the size of the system okay so but I, can i give you a state of the system by giving you volume total number of moles and temperature yes i can okay look at this expression if i give you v n and t you know r so only p if i get p i have p and t two intensive quantities i can find any intensive property if i want to find extensive quantity then i just take this and multiply with it i'll get all the extensive quantities right it's simpler okay so you have to think about this now i'll go back and uh, look at my energy if i want to define energy i have to define it somehow in terms of two properties and composition okay so if i'm thinking about uh, constant volume kind of systems i want to think about volume as a key parameter okay temperature of course is another key parameter for energy and then remaining things you need will be concentrations it could be intensive or extensive i could give you number of moles of each gas in my air say air is having so many moles of oxygen so many moles of nitrogen i can give or i can just tell you 21% of molecules are oxygen 79% of molecules are nitrogen i can tell you that way also mole fraction or number of moles i can give that also as long as i have another extensive quantity sitting here this is another way of looking at it so you have to think about it in the specific way let us say composition is fixed am i giving enough number of variables here one intensive and one extensive so if i give you volume and temperature you will tell me pressure you 
cannot right. So, ideally I need to give you 3 quantities irrespective of composition, composition has to be known other than that I need 3 quantities of which at least one should be extensive because I am writing extensive I am interested in extensive quantities ok. So, I would say I will typically give you pressure. So, I will write this instead of this I will write it like this ok, but now we will go back and simplify the problem. We will tell that for my gas internal energy is not a function of pressure ok, I am going to tell it is a function of temperature main function is only function of temperature ok. Of course, it depends on volume, but uh, that is related to it is an extensive quantity that is the idea there ok. So, we are going to say I will keep pressure ok, but I will say my gas does not care about pressure ok, whatever be the pressure my gas does not depends on temperature the same way irrespective of pressure ok. That is what we are going to say if a gas does this I am going to call this gas as thermally perfect gas thermally perfect gas that is I am going to write it differently I will call this C V the specific heat capacity per vo constant volume is a function of temperature only of course, we know the composition exists and the extensive quantity volume also exists we will not deal with all that right now we will just tell this quantity is a function of temperature only if this is the case then my gas is thermally perfect gas ok. If this is the case then I also can write specific heat at constant pressure will also be a function of temperature only but a different function that is why I put a prime there some question. So, it depend on the temperature only so why the pressure it needs pressure and temperature and all. I am writing a generalized case here I am saying to define a state of my system I need 3 quantities irrespective of I need composition plus 3 quantities. So, I am picking P V and T that is what I have done here ok. Now, of course, I could have written this N i as x i the mole fraction also mole fraction of all the species also that will still work ok. Now, I am going to say volume yes it is there that is what is my extensiveness of this quantity we will keep it that way only thing is pressure I do not want it to be a thing uh, dependent on pressure currently ok. I am going to consider gases which are typically independent of pressure a the internal energies relation with temperature is independent of pressure that is all I am going to say. So, only those kind of gases are called thermally perfect gases. Now, we will go one more step further we will say if C V or C P the specific heat at constant pressure if they are constants as a function of temperature now it is not a any general function it is a constant with temperature. If I say that then the gas is called a calorically perfect gas previous was called a thermally perfect gas now it is calorically perfect gas. Now, I have to define things very clearly when I say calorically perfect gas C p and C v are constant along with that I would also call this uh, p equal to r t or p v equal to n r t is also obeyed ok by that gas. If I say my gas is calorically perfect if I say my gas is thermally perfect then I am saying p equal to r t or p v equal to n r t along with C p and C v are functions of temperature only ok. 
that is what we will have. Now, uh, why are we talking about C P C V so much in gas dynamics, why? It so happens that for common gases, uh, you had an answer, tell me. flows so uh, we need a parameter to define flow like enthalpy and all so for enthalpy uh, defining enthalpy we need a cp uh, cp for that okay enthalpy is given as cp times t when we when is enthalpy given as cp times t for which gas for calorically perfect gas okay in simple gas dynamics if you go look at most of the books in gas dynamics, they will deal with H enthalpy is equal to C p times T, they are always assuming calorically perfect gas, okay. but in real life no gas is calorically perfect for all range of temperatures. Every gas can be told that for some particular range say 100 Kelvin to 400 Kelvin C p is constant, that kind of thing will happen for most gases there will be a particular range where it will be a constant C p, but after that C p changes, why? Typically all this time let us say for low temperatures the molecules are not vibrating the bonds, but at higher temperatures let us say I pick uh, oxygen, oxygen connected with a double bond right and the bonds get extended or contracted if I go to very high temperatures, till that time that particular vibration is not significant, there is not much energy stored in it, we neglect it and it is ok. But when we go to very high temperatures of the order of 2000 Kelvin for oxygen, it matters, the significant amount of energy given to oxygen will be taken for vibration of this bond. Okay. So, then it matters, at that time we cannot neglect this uh, C p variation. So, I will go back to thermally perfect. I will not use calorically perfect gas in such situations. Typically when we go from regular gas dynamics to high temperature gas dynamics, we will switch from calorically perfect gas to thermally perfect gas. Of course, in this course we will still continue with calorically perfect gas. Okay. Now, we will just have to go give some relations between various variables. What is the value of universal gas constant R, if I write a number I need units for this unless it is non dimensional parameter, ok. I will write uh, whatever I here first. this is a possible unit which is correct or I will just say remove this 1000 and 1000, I can equivalently write the unit could be joules per mole Kelvin, okay, that is also possible units. Okay. I remember it as this, simple enough. Okay. Now, specific gas constant. But of course, now I have to know what gas it is. Let us pick air, what is the molecular weight of air? That is what I want to correct in this course. Many people will think it is 29, I do not want to use 29. use 28.8, if you want to be more accurate use 28.83 or 84, that is closer to the correct answer, do not use 29, 29 will throw you off in C p and C v values much more, okay, we will keep this. What units is this? Grams, that is it, grams per mole, grams per mole, but this is not S i unit. So, what will I do? I will make this 
into 10 power minus 3 kilograms per mole. I will write it like this. This answer comes out to be this 288.7. You should check the units also per mole divided by per mole goes away, kg is in the denominator just sticks to the denominator, it is what you should get. Okay. Use this, this is better than if you use 29 here you will get 286.6, that will throw you off already a little bit. When you want to do extensive variable calculations, you will be thrown off much more, okay. we do not want that. This is closer to the correct answer for air. Uh, next variable will be C V, let us say I want per mole C V, oh, we use the symbol cap for it, per mole C V, how will I get that? Universal gas constant divided by gamma minus 1, this is the first time I am using gamma here, gamma is Is this Cp by Cv uh, intensive or extensive? What uh, what Cp should I use here? They should both be same, but they can be extensive or intensive. Okay, as long as units get cancelled, I don't have to worry about it. I can have per mole Cp, per mole Cv, divide them, or per mass Cv, per, ma per mass Cp and per mass Cv, divide them. That should all be fine. Okay, think about it that way. For gas air, what is it? For air, 1.4, that is the number for this. Okay. So, of course, I can calculate this number, I have to find what the number is, I do not remember that number. Seven twenty one point seven five. I am sorry, I made a mistake here, we will correct it right now. This is kilogram Kelvin, which means I should not put equal to sign here. Okay. I have used two eighty eight point seven divided by gamma minus one to get to this answer. 288.7 divided by 0.4 will give you this, I did it per mass basis, per mole basis will be a different number, if you want me to write it again, I will write it this will give you this number, okay, 721. If I do C p, this should be gamma by gamma minus 1 times r, this number is 1010.4, okay. if you use 29 as your molecular weight, you will get uh, numbers that are very different from this, you will get close to 987,000 that kind of numbers you will get, 1003.7 or something is the closest you will get I think. Okay. So, think about that, use this number that is better for you. Okay. The next thing we need to talk about is, if I have a process, how will this process occur? on a state diagram, that is the main idea of using thermodynamics in gas dynamics. We want to review this thermodynamics, so that I can go for any particular flow situation and then look at how my gas is going from one state to other, is it a particular process, typically we deal with isentropic process, 
of course, I can have some other processes constant temperature process, constant volume process, I can have different processes. So, I want to go and look at it on the state diagram that is what we will do the next time and then figure out what kind of processes will give what kind of curves on them on the state diagram with different axes, we will try different axes okay. that we will start with next time and after we are comfortable with different uh, plots, we will go into laws of mechanics and uh, derivation of mass, momentum and energy equation that is what we will do next time, see you guys next time. Any other questions you guys have, see you guys next time.